Thank you again this morning. So, 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 so good to see you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you very much. It was a lovely, lovely day. Yeah. I am speaking to you, Jay. Mm. Uh, it's good to see you again. Jay, are you out? Are you in? And I want to tell you something that I personally experienced. There are second acts, Jay, uh, in comedy as in politics. And uh, I can check if there's uh, a late night spot on Israeli television. I can talk to the, uh, I'll put in a good word to the Minister of Communications. I know him very well. Tonight we're all here to uh, honor the Genesis Laureate of uh, 2015, Michael Douglas. And uh, this morning, Sarah and I and our son Yair had the pleasure of uh, hosting now, welcoming, welcoming Michael, his wife Catherine, and his two children, Dylan and Karis. What a beautiful family. And I was impressed. I was always impressed with uh, Michael and Catherine because they're great actors, which means they're great artists and to borrow a phrase, which I did, from one of your father's movies, you too cast a giant shadow over your profession and set a standard for all actors to follow. I want to recognize... In fact, on the way over here, Michael and I were talking, and I asked him, remember that movie with rage? You remember that movie in the jungle? You remember those movies. How can you forget them? They're unforgettable because you and Catherine are unforgettable actors. There are two other unforgettable people who, are, who loom large in our people's story. And they're my two close friends, the chairman of the Jewish agency, Nathan Sharansky, and the Speaker of the Knesset, Yuli Edelstein. You know, we always ask uh, in Israel, when we meet somebody, we said, so what did you do in the army? What did you do in the army? Because it sort of tells you, I'm talking about politicians now, it sort of tells you, what did you do before you started wearing masks? because politics always involves that to a certain extent. Yuli and Natan, before they, they came into politics, they were imprisoned in the Soviet Union. They fought for freedom. They came here and they deserved the prominence and respect that they have in Israel and around the world. And I salute you both. And I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank Michael Friedman, Peter Avin, and German Kahn for your dedication, for your commitment, for your generosity. And to Stan Polovitz, the chairman and CEO of uh, the Genesis Prize, thank you for everything you're doing, Stan. And thanks, too, to Led Blavatnik, who participates in this project. And thanks to all the members of the Selection and Prize Committee. Thank you. The Prime Minister's Office, the Jewish Agency, and the Genesis Prouse Foundation have united around this important project. And if I had to sum, summarize in one word what it is that we're trying to foster, that word is pride. Pride in the Jewish people, pride in the Jewish state. And there's much to be proud of because the Jewish people are Remarkable in so many ways, not only because we brought the book of books 
the idea of monotheism, the idea of prophetic ideas of salvation and human rights and the equality of all people under God, but also because after for about 1500 years where we did all that in this land, we were dispersed to the far corners of the earth, which is not unique. It happened to many peoples. In fact, it happened to a majority of the peoples of antiquity. They were dispersed, they were gone, they lost their identity and disappeared. This is actually the most common thing that happened to the peoples of the past. The one thing that is unique about the Jewish people is that having been dispersed, they refused to disappear. And they kept saying year after year, for two millennia, they kept saying, we'll be back. Sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger. We'll be back. We'll be back in Jerusalem, back in the land of Zion, back in the land of Israel. And this seemed an impossible dream, but we did achieve that return and the ingathering of the exiles. And this dawns on you on special occasions, and I was once a soldier, and we marched through the Judean desert. You just cover the whole thing, and hot days, and you wait to get to the end point in the evening, and the end point was the foothills of Masada. Now, it's hard to have this sense of elation when your, your muscles are strained, your feet are sore, you're, you're covered in sweat. And then I remember in that night looking up at that mountain where the last remnants of Jewish resistance were defeated by the Romans in 73 CE, that's almost 2,000 years ago, and we were demolished. I was standing exhausted in our, the place where our people were supposed to be exhausted, finished, dead, dispersed, gone. And I was standing there, a soldier in the army of Israel, the army of the Jewish state, and I look up at that mountaintop, and I think of the Roman commander Silva and I said, I actually said this, Silva, we're back. We came back. And this is one of our achievements. But when we came back, we climbed so many mountains, we crossed so many deserts, and we created a country like no other. It's a country that, though beleaguered, has created these amazing things. Yes, technology. Uh, you have your cell phone, you have Israel in your palm. So many applications, so many innovations. You, have, uh, you drink a glass of water, not only in Israel, but in many countries now, you're drinking the product of Israeli technology. Yes, number one, in recycling. I was um, in China and, uh, with uh, President Xi, and they said, we want to have your dairy industry. They have to feed a lot of, they drink a lot of milk in China. And I said, well, that's a very good choice because you know which cow produces more milk per cow than any other cow? You think it's a Dutch cow, a French cow? No, it's a, it's a Jewish cow. It's a computerized cow. It has, every, every moo is computerized. And the same is true of water. You want to drink just to live, but hundreds of millions around the world are enjoying the products of Israeli innovation. That's the old problem that we've solved with new techniques, but there's a new problem that we're solving, and that's the problem of cybersecurity. You need it. You can't have the geometric growth of the internet economy without having cyber protection. And the other day, as I told Michael this morning, in fact, last week, the chairman of uh, Google, uh, Eric Schmidt, visited my office and he says, Israel is number one, number one digital powerhouse in the world. I said, Eric, aren't you exaggerating a bit? He said, no, you know, I'll be precise. In absolute measures that I make, you're number two. 
after Silicon Valley, after Cambridge Mass, and after Cambridge, in, sorry, before Cambridge Mass, before Cambridge, England. Per capita, you're way off the charts. And what you're doing now in Israel is setting a growth engine for the next 50 years. So Israel is all that, and medicine. A lot of the drugs that people use and the medical applications originate here. So it's not merely doing good things for us, it's doing good things for humanity. Israel is an oasis of technology, of innovation. It's an oasis of freedom. An oasis of freedom and liberty and light in a region that appears to be a sea of darkness and despotism. Now democracies are tested under fire. And we've been tested from day one. But we've maintained our values. We've built here a rambunctious democracy. Jay, you out there, in there? You come to the Knesset for one day, it'll give you material for a lifetime. A third and fourth act. This is a democracy where all our citizens, Jews and non-Jews alike, are equal under the law. And I'm proud that in the one and only Jewish state, Jews can come here and live here as free people, and they can come here from any part of the world. All Jews can feel at home here. And as Prime Minister of Israel, I'm committed to strengthening the unity of the Jewish people. And I will continue to reject any attempt to divide the Jewish people and to de delegitimize any Jewish community. Everyone is welcome, reform, conservative, orthodox alike, everyone. Of course, the great irony is that Israel, this unbelievably vivid and lively democracy is the most maligned free society on earth. In the UN Human Rights Councils, there are more resolutions on Israel, just the majority of the resolutions, more than North Korea, Iran, Sudan, Syria combined. And you know, when you face this criticism, this torrent, of unfair criticism every day, every hour. It assumes the cachet of self-evident truth. That's what slanders and lies tend to do. And under this attack, you can easily bow your head. But I want to tell you that the days when the Jewish people bow their heads, those days are over since we founded the Jewish state. We resist. It's not that the attacks on the Jews or their state have ceased with the founding of Israel. It's that we have the capacity to resist. That's new. That's something that evaded our people for centuries. And Michael, your father understands this. You understand this. And as I discovered this morning, your son understands this. Like your father, you've turned your values into action. You serve as a UN messenger of peace. That's the good UN. And on the occasion of Israel's 50th independence celebration, you hosted a nationally broadcast television tribute to Israel. You know, our seventh anniversary is coming on. I was on the 50th anniversary as prime minister. It may be possible that I'll be there on the 70th. Why don't you do it again? And earlier this week, earlier this year, you wrote very movingly in the Los Angeles Times about your son Dylan's experience with anti-Semitism. This piece created an online sensation, and it drew painful attention to a subject many would prefer to sweep under the rug. You've publicly denounced anti-Israel groups that call for a boycott of the Jewish state. You correctly describe the boycott movement as an ugly cancer, ugly cancer. For there can be no tolerance for intolerance. 
for those who demonize and vilify the Jewish state. Mind you, we're not perfect. We have our imperfections. Who doesn't? But there's a world of difference between pertinent, legitimate criticism and the kind of vilification that is addressed to Israel every day that is really meant to deny us our right to live as a free people in our land. And rather than suppressing your Jewish identity, you chose to embrace it. And I think the most moving embrace is the decision to celebrate Dylan's bar mitzvah in Israel. And it demonstrates both your commitment to our heritage and to our land, to our country. So Michael, I wish to applaud you for all your accomplishments and the impact you will certainly have in your years ahead in fulfilling your role as a Genesis Laureate. I applaud you, Michael, for coming here to Jerusalem, our capital for 3,000 years where we are shaping our future while we remember our past. I applaud you, and I think this is the most important thing, for setting an example to Jews everywhere to stand tall and stand proud. Be proud Jews. Thank you all. Thank you. something another re if, if you had been with Michael today you would have seen he took every picture he shook hands with every person I think we all know movie stars are a little diva-ish but none of them have your qualifications and one of the things you've won and just to watch you move and people come up oh and you took a picture and you shook hands and I role model myself after you and I go I see you do it and I go wow it's very impressive so I, I just wanted to say that so Jake yeah thank you sure sure all right Get a photo, I'll, I'll sneak in here. Which one does not belong? <laughs> Which is not like the others? <laughs> no, no, no. Folks, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs>